when you do a fantasy draft, you're probably not going to come away at the end saying, that went exactly the way I wanted. That was the perfect draft. But let's try. Yahoo is one of the most popular platforms for fantasy baseball. And if you draft on there based on their rankings and ADP, this is what I consider my perfect draft. If you can't wait for draft season, guess what? You don't have to. Join Underdog Fantasy and you can draft right now for MLB Best Ball for the 2024 season. They've got some new contests that just opened up. Check them out right now. If you sign up and use promo code ENDGAME, you get a 100% deposit match for your first $100 that you put into your account. Try Underdog Fantasy today. So let's start with round one, and I'm going to look at Freddie Freeman. Look, what is there to question here? A guy will help you in every single category. Even though he may not have the highest ceiling in any single category, He's going to keep you well above average in every category, especially batting average. Last year, one of his best marks of his career, 331 batting average and the best stolen base total, 23 steals. And so it's not like you have to sacrifice just because you didn't get a young speedster like a Corbin Carroll or Julio Rodriguez. And it's always nice to nail down a corner infield spot early so you can move on to other positions. But in round two, how about we go to the other corner and grab Jose Ramirez at third base? That's right. J-Ram is not a consensus first round pick anymore. In fact, on Yahoo right now ranked 15th. So you could possibly get him in the second round to pair with a guy like Freeman. He also benefited from the new rules where everyone saw a bump in steals, wound up swiping 28 bags, the second most of his career. And there's really no question about every other category. You know he's got the power, the batting average, everything. And what's interesting, and possibly a new wrinkle, new manager Stephen Vogt in Cleveland might be using him occasionally at second base besides third. Can you imagine if he added middle infield eligibility as well? Now in round three, it's time to grab an elite outfielder. That's right. We can still get a guy like Luis Robert for the White Sox. 38 home runs and 20 steals a year ago. The batting average isn't quite up there with some of the other players that already went off the board in round one, but he's still helping you so much with power and speed. And look, 264, that's not going to kill you. Strikeouts are still an issue for him. But again, this guy is really not hurting you in terms of batting average. He will score. He will drive in runs. Elite power. Now, if you're getting nervous, we haven't taken a pitcher yet. Don't worry. It's round four. We can still get a guy like Pablo Lopez of the Twins. On Yahoo, his ADP is 46 overall. That's about five picks later than most other sites. If you're wondering whether he's truly an ace worthy of the number one rotation spot on your team, yes, he is. Remember, he finished third in the majors with 234 strikeouts last year and pitched a total of 194 innings. That's the definition of a workhorse. He will get the K still. This guy is still young. He's getting better. And he's going to also get plenty of wins because he's going long enough into games. I'm not opposed to taking a starting pitcher in the first couple of rounds, but you can get very similar production right here. Now in round five, we could go a lot of different ways. Why not lock down the closer job and get Josh Hader, who's now in Houston? You can't wait too long to get a closer who you know is going to get you a ton of saves and an elite strikeout rate. That is Hayter. Look, maybe he's not striking out guys quite like he did at the beginning of his career, but a 37% K rate, yeah, that'll still do. And let's face it, there is no battle here for the job. Hayter's already been given the job. Presley will set him up. There's no competition. It's going to be Hayter. He's going to get plenty of saves in that Astros bullpen. Now in round six, it's time for one of my favorite picks. You know I'm all over Grayson Rodriguez this year. To get him this late feels like a steal. If you saw my bold predictions video, then you know he's my pick for Cy Young. This guy's all the tools. The skills are there. He's on a team that is now the best in its division. And I kind of find it hard to believe he's going 71 overall on Yahoo. And then next up, Logan Gilbert. Also going a little too late, 79 on Yahoo, even though his consensus across all the major platforms is 67. Why is he going later here? I don't know, but I would gladly take advantage of it. This is another workhorse, despite being such a young pitcher. Went for 190 innings last year, won 13 games, and this is a team, Seattle, I keep saying it, they're going to stretch out their starters. I love everybody in this rotation, but to get a guy like this who is a solid SP2 this late... Again, right now, I'm already loving my rotation, and we're only seven rounds in. 
So let's go back to offense. Round eight, I think it's time to pull the trigger on a catcher. We don't need to spend up way too early on those guys who, look, they're good. The Adley Rushmans, the JT Real Mutos, going a little early for my taste. I like William Contreras of the Brewers right here. Also great value going later on Yahoo than the other platforms. It's really interesting because I expected Contreras last year to hit for more power than he did. Somehow wound up hitting fewer home runs despite taking 200 more at bats. But 17 home runs, that's fine. And I do think he can get back to the 20 mark again this year. Also interesting that he did jump up in terms of batting average, but he outperformed his expected batting average by quite a bit. He wound up hitting 289, even though his XBA was kind of just in the middle, 50th percentile. What are we going to get this year? Well, I think we're going to get both above average, average, and above average power. But best of all, he's going to be hitting in the top of that lineup. Contreras, rock solid catcher, going to be out there almost every day. No worries. We're in round nine now. Let's solidify the middle infield and start with a Yankee who I feel like is just undervalued everywhere. Glaber Torres. If you're playing on CBS, ESPN, or another site, you might not see him out there because his overall ADP is about 85, but yet on Yahoo, around pick 100, here he still is. Look, Torres got off to a hot start last year, cooled off, and a lot of people just kind of didn't pay attention to him or the Yankees in the second half of the season because it was all about those rookies, the young players and the Yankees, of course, kind of underachieved. But what you did notice is that Torres actually remained solid and had a good second half of the season. He's got all the skills that you want. He's got the everyday second base job. He can help you a little bit in every category. This is a very solid pick here. And I'm going to be looking to his double play battery mate in a second. But first, let's get another high end arm. Cole Reagans in round 10. Reagans is one of those players whose value will be all over the place. In some drafts, he'll go earlier than this. Some drafts, he'll actually go later. It's funny because on CBS, his ADP is 79. On NFBC, it's 107. And on Yahoo, it's actually even higher. If you don't believe in last year's second half breakout, you know what, fine. Go with somebody safer. I'm actually perfectly happy with a guy like Sonny Gray in this range. But to me, if Reagans is still on the board, I'm taking him. All right, next up, I kind of hinted at this just now, but it's time for Anthony Volpe. Hard to believe we're getting some anti-New York vibes here, some bias because, well, yeah, it was a disappointing year for the Yankees. And Volpe, believe it or not, a lot of people were disappointed in him because the batting average was not good, barely over the 200 mark, and he struggled with strikeouts. But he still managed to go for 20 home runs. He still stole a bunch of bases. And this year, I think we're going to see something truer to what we expected with Volpe. It's a guy who can hit for average because he can hit for average. Trust me, he did it all across the minors. That's why he's one of their top prospects. And he's working on it already in the spring to flatten his swing. That means he's not selling out for power. He really doesn't need to. This guy can start going line drive happy, singles, doubles. The power will still be there. I fully expect that even if his average jumps up because he does flatten that swing, he can still go for 15, maybe even 20 home runs again. And he's going to get you 20 plus steals. And round 12, let's go with a green red. And that's Hunter Green. Look, I love Hunter Green. I'm going to be all over him. I talk about him in several videos. And again, it, I almost cannot believe that he would be sitting here available in round 12. But that's what the ADP says. And in round 13, Let's go to Riley Green of Detroit, another player I've talked plenty about. Look, there are some injury concerns because of the elbow was an issue last year. He's still kind of working his way back, but he should be healthy for opening day. This guy has power. He's got a great hit tool, and I'm all in on that Detroit Tigers lineup, which is also something you might have known if you watched my bold predictions video. All right, it's time to get another closer because one just won't cut it. Guy like Tanner Scott seems perfect here. Like, I know he's been a little up and down through his career, but it looks like he's firmly penciled in as the closer in Miami. AJ Puck was the guy to start last season, and now they're talking about moving him to the rotation. That just tells me less about the fact that they feel like Puck can or should start, but more about the fact that Scott has that closer job. And he earned it throughout the second half. He was lights out last year. One of the top in terms of CSW, that's called strikes and whiffs. He was peppering the strike zone, something that he didn't always do, but he figured it out. Look, Scott is going to get a bunch of saves. Miami is one of those teams that maybe not win the most games, but they win close games. 
And now we're in round 15. I'll tell you, I've come around to accepting that Chaz McCormick should be a great value this year. Is he a top 10 center fielder right now in the majors? I don't know. I don't care about those lists. I know in fantasy, he can be a 2020 guy. Because last year, he hit 22 home runs and stole 19 bases. And they're even saying that this year, he's going to play a more important role. To me, that means pretty much everyday playing time. And he's in an Astros lineup that was fifth in runs scored last year. And not a lot has changed there. In round 16, Bailey Ober seems rock solid to kind of round out the end of this starting pitching rotation. He's available later on Yahoo Drafts than in any other platform. 176 is the pick where you can get him. And let's just say that you don't always have to go for a sleeper or a breakout. Maybe this isn't some young upcoming pitcher. Maybe not somebody who's going to all of a sudden go off and strike out 250 batters. It's okay to get a guy who's just solid. He's going to eat up innings. He's going to accumulate stats. I'm perfectly fine with that. But I'm also okay getting a guy like Bryce Miller, who absolutely could be a breakout this year. Earlier, I mentioned Hunter Green, who a lot of talk about him adding not one but two pitches, including a splitter. Bryce Miller doing the same, kind of playing around with his pitch mix. He's trying to also add a splitter so far. Looks pretty good. He's really focusing on tunneling with the fastball. And, you know, I watched Lance Brozdowski's breakdown. Great video if you happen to catch that on YouTube. Very smart guy. And just explaining exactly the thinking. And just just hearing Bryce Miller talk about what he's aiming for, it really sold me on the fact that he isn't just playing around and just experimenting with this thing. He knows what he's doing. It looks like it'll be effective. So I'm sold. We're getting to pick 18 here. Time to take a flyer. How about a guy who's been a multi-time all-star, hit 33 home runs, and drove in over 100 runs last year? He just doesn't have a team right now. That's J.D. Martinez. Like Martinez is going to sign somewhere, maybe even before you watch this video. He's already signed. Does it really matter where? I mean, maybe he can't find a team that's more loaded than the Dodgers lineup, but I know he's being picky because apparently he met with the Giants and said no thanks, which is why they went with Jorge Soler. The Mets have been rumored here. He's going to find a team where he can do what he does, and that's hit for power. This guy clearly hasn't lost anything in terms of bat speed. So at pick 18 here, why not? By the time round 19 comes along, let's take a chance on Tyler O'Neill having a bounce back year. I feel like I've talked a lot about him this preseason. I feel like this is a prime spot for him to bounce back. Got power, got speed, just needs to stay healthy. And then in round 20, well, we got two closers. Could we use another one? Of course we can. But how about a guy who isn't yet the closer, but might be? Hector Norris of Chicago is very intriguing. You know, I did a video earlier on some save sleepers, pitchers who aren't in line to be the closer when the season starts, but could very well take the job or be given it. This doesn't mean I'm out on Albert Alzale, but I do know that Craig Council isn't all in because he didn't announce him as the closer. And this is a new manager, has no ties to Alzale. He's going to do what's best for the team. Nerys has that closing experience. Last year, only saved two games, got 31 holds. But for his career, he has 89 saves, and we know he's clutch in high leverage situations. And I'll also say this, you don't have to just draft a reliever who is a closer because there are some guys like Nerys who can help you with your ratios, with your strikeouts, and just kind of generally help your staff out without having to be the ninth inning guy. If I could have my perfect draft on Yahoo, that's what it would look like. What about the opposite? The worst draft possible? Well, here it is.